Um, the one thing that I wanted to talk about, thank you to everybody that's hanging out, by the way. We've been talking a lot about, oh, you're going to make me download it, um, how much of an impact skipping the preseason has. And I've been giving my sort of just general opinion on things, and I think it was Goose, I don't exactly remember, reached out and kind of had a point or a question. I was like, you know what, why don't I just do a semi-deep dive, just just actually look at it, and then see, you know, th- this will be our final time, we'll do one deep dive, and then we're putting it to bed. So I looked at a couple different people with a very simple goal in mind. I looked at Kenny Clark, Zadarius Smith, Adrian Amos, a- uh, Aaron Jones, Corey Lindley, David Bakhtiari, Devontae Adams, and Aaron Rodgers. Generally, these are Green Bay Packers who have been around long enough to give us a, a somewhat of a big enough sample size. Question is this. Um, in a given year, how many snaps did they have? And what was their grade in week one? And so I want to see what is the correlation between the number of snaps. In other words, if you get more time in the preseason, do you perform better week one or not? So let's go through that. um, And we'll see. And again, if you're hanging out with me today, thank you for that. Be sure to keep pumping in those comments because how long this goes depends entirely on if we have anything to talk about outside of this. Um, but we'll start with Kenny Clark. And again, I'm not going to, I'm try, going to try to not give my opinion as we go along, but just kind of get a feel for it. Do you feel like there's a correlation here? So starting in 2016 through 2020, and remember in 2020, the number is always going to be zero because there wasn't a preseason. 38, he had a 62 overall grade. 63 snaps, 63 overall grade. 63, 67, 20, 69, 0, 65. So 38, 63, 63, 20, and 0. So kind of a decent amount, a ton, a ton, a little bit, and nothing. His grades over that period were 62, 63, 67, 69, and 65. He is unbelievably consistent in week one, and he is consistently average, average to good. Um, Everybody kind of knows he has somewhat of a slow start, wildly consistent in that range. Doesn't seem to be any correlation. I said I wasn't going to comment, but just based on Kenny, I don't really see any correlation between the number of opportunities he gets and, um, for example, the two times he had a ton of snaps in preseason in 17 and 18, his grades were a 63 and a 67. The year he had zero snaps, his grade was a 65, right in between those two. What difference does it make? It didn't make any difference. Let's look at Zedarius. Um, 2015, and this is with Baltimore, so it's from 2015 to 2020, and it was too confusing going back and forth, so we'll just do snaps. 215, 58, 83, 76, 21, and 0. So he played a ton in 2015, a relatively high amount in 16, 17, 18, then a low amount in 19, and 0 in 20. His grades, 60, 54, 70, 69, 74, 76. So his grades kind of are on a path going straight up. Now, I'm guessing most people are going to say, well, yeah, but he got better as a player. Right. There is a correlation between how good of a player you are and how well you perform on week one, but that's kind of a point away from your point, isn't it? The point isn't, are you playing a lot in the preseason? The the question is, are you a good football player? Right? If you if you had to decide how good are they going to be week one, or are you looking at primarily how much did you play? week two of the preseason, or how good of a football player you are. So in Zadarius's case, as he got better as a football player, he performed better in week one, despite the fact that he was playing less and less snaps as time went on. Didn't seem to impact him because he got better and better every week one, with some up and down because nothing's ever perfectly consistent. Now, there are two players where you could make a case for not having any playing time caused them to have a slow week. And I did put a couple notes. If they did perform worse with low snap counts, how long until they rebounded? Adrian Amos is one of those guys. So 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20 are his years. 88, 81, 105, then 29, 21, and 0. His grades, 65, 67, 60, 78, 70, and 51. So average, 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 good, good, bad. The one time he was bad ever in week one was the one year that correlates with him um, not having any snaps. Now, that could just be a coincidence, right? Because everybody has one of those 51 overall grade games. It's entirely possible that he just happened to have it 
that one time. But whatever. So then the question is, well, when did he finally rebound or have his first good week? It was in week three. So it didn't take all that long. Aaron Jones, again, is the other one. This one's a little bit more convincing because you've got four years, 17, 18, 19, and 20. He didn't play any snaps in 19 or 20. He did in 17 and 18. So 60 snaps, 40 snaps, 0, 0. His grades, 61, 71, 58, 56. So average, good, bad, bad. And the bad, bad correlates to 19 and 20 with 0 snaps. So maybe, and it may be a player-to-player situation, not just for everybody. And I kind of talked about that with Aaron Rodgers saying, if it's going to affect anybody, Aaron Rodgers is low on the list of people because he's a professional and he's, you know, whatever, et cetera, et cetera. Follow-up question. How long did it take for him to rebound? Week two. Week two. So even if there is a thing, if Aaron Jones comes out of the gate a little bit slow because he didn't get his 20 reps or whatever in the preseason, you can expect him to bounce back by week two. So, again, take it for what it's worth. Corey Lindsley, um, 134, 75, 0, 45, 28, 15, and 0. His grades, 75, 71, 73, 67, 59, 58, and 71. So he had two years with zero snaps, 16 and 20. His grades in those games were 73 and 71. His two low grades were times that he played in the preseason. So there's zero correlation. It's just nothing really matches up. He was usually pretty good. He had a couple that were bad. They don't really correlate to snaps. Uh, when he had zero, it was, it was very high, but not quite as highest, but still good. You know what I mean? It's like there's nothing here. I'm just, I'm just providing you the information. It, it makes sense that they would come out of the gate slow. I'm just asking you. I'm reading off the numbers. Does it sound to you like there is an, an, a direct correlation between more snaps and higher grades? I haven't heard it outside of maybe, maybe on a player-to-player basis. Bakhtiari, we got three more. I'm going to go through them. Keep the comments coming. His snaps, he's got a lot of them. Uh, 111, 77, 33, 57, 45, 16, 15, and 0. So very, very high. Moderate from 14 to 17. Kind of low, but played in 18 and 19. And then in 20, didn't play at all. His grades... 59, 49, 60, 75, 84, 83, 57, and 81. This one's similar to Zadarius where you'd say, well, he just keeps getting better and better over time as a player. Again, yes, because that's the factor that we should actually care about. Are you a good football player? If you're a good football player, we expect you to be good week one, and that's a fair assessment. But there are some anomalies in there. Same with if you look at Adrian Amos. There's that random 57 overall grade. Well, he did play. Well, he didn't play very much. Well, he played the same amount as 18, and he had an 83 overall grade. So again, it's just it's just random. It's all just random. Generally, you're going to play well in week one if you're a good football player. Regardless, the one time he didn't play, he came out of the gate with an 81 overall grade. That's his third highest in his entire preseason career. Devontae. 121, 57, 113, 44, 13, 7, and 0. So like all these other guys, as you get better over time and as we start to get away, and most teams are starting to play their starters less and less, you start to see the decline in snaps. His grades, 54, 69, 63, 61, 80, 61, 84. Again, he's getting better as he becomes a better player because that's the factor that matters. His highest grade ever was last year, the one time he's never played a snap. It's it's the exact opposite of what you would expect. Why didn't he come out of the gate slow? You would expect him to eat, even if it's like... <sighs> What is expected? What is his average? Like an 80? Okay, well, week one with no snaps, he'd come out like a 70. No, he didn't. He was higher than he's ever been. His best week one grade ever was in 2020 when he didn't play any snaps. He didn't come out of the gate slow. There's no correlation here for Devontae Adams, for David Bakhtiari, for Corey Lindsley, for Zadarius Smith, or for Kenny Clark between how much they play in the preseason and how well they perform week one. Amos, maybe, but it was just one year. It could have been an anomaly. Aaron Jones is the only one that's halfway convincing, but we're talking about four years. Aaron Rodgers, it only goes back to 13, so that's what we're going to do. 45, 69, 47, 25, 26, 6, 0, 0. So basically since 2018, he hasn't hardly done anything. His grades, 77, 67, 91, 68, 67, 64, 56, 96. So the, the, the couple takeaways here. Uh, number one, he, he comes out of the gate kind of slow here. Have you, you noticed that? 
he, he's got, in week one, he does have the two 90s in there, and then 170, otherwise 67, 68, 67, 64, and 56. The vast majority of his week ones, pretty low. Low average to bad in week one. So Aaron Rodgers generally not coming out of the gate firing. Um, and two of those were in 2018, 2019, and 2020 in that range. He had a 64 and a 56. Now, again, it doesn't really matter because he also had 60s when he played a lot. And the most important thing, 96, one of the greatest games he's ever played in his entire career. It was the second highest grade he had in 2020 because he was a freak in 2020, so he surpassed his old record. But I think 96 was his second highest graded game ever, his highest ever at that time. And it came in 2020 after taking zero snaps in the preseason like everybody else. And he had, the at that time, I think the best game of his entire career, according to PFF. So again, I, I kind of just want to put it to bed. There might be some guys that come out slow, and it might just be the whole chemistry of the team in general and as of the unit in general kind of getting the rhythm and the motion of all this stuff going on. But on a player-to-player basis, I went through, I read it all to you. You tell me, do, do you see a correlation? Because I don't see a correlation.